you don't need to continue second-guessing yourself, wondering, God, am I doing what pleases you? God, am I where you want me to be? Lord, where do you want me in this season? You can know the will of God with perfect confidence. You don't have to second-guess the will of God. You can look to the Scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit and see that you are centered in the perfect will of God. Number one, the first sign is a biblical lifestyle. Now, this really is the simplest way to know that you're in the will of God. If you want to know God's will, you must know God's word. If you're serious about knowing God's will, then you need to get serious about knowing God's word. There is in our generation a biblical deficiency, hmm. a lack of scripture, a lack of truth. And because of that lack of truth, there's confusion, there's second guessing, there's constant wondering. The scripture says this in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Mom. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may have heard that there are three different wills of God. There's the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will of God. And some will say that you can live in the permissive will of God, which is basically a lesser level of obedience. There are not three different wills of God. There is one will of God, and that one single will of God is good, is acceptable, is perfect. His will is perfect, but we are not. So God's standard, that will that he has for our lives, remains the same. We measure our lives against the word. We measure our character against the word. We measure our behaviors and our thought patterns against the word. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, we actually center ourselves in the will of God. So we may not be perfect, but the will of God is perfect. That's why yeah. the will of God is the standard that we aim for. That is the reference point. That is the focal point. We must aim to live according to that will. Your life can be an offering poured out for God's pleasure. And that's what it means to live in the will of God. And when you live in the will of God, you're living according to the scripture. It's impossible to live according to God's will and according to the patterns of this world at the same time. If you want to live according to God's will, then you have to give up worldly opinions. You have to go against what culture says. You cannot take your cues from culture. You cannot take your instructions from your politics. You cannot take your instructions from the media points of this world, social media and television and radio and the music industry. All of those things will lead to deception and darkness. It's only when we center our lives and pattern our lives after the will of God, based on the word of God, that we begin to become centered in the will of God, which is pleasing to him. I want you to know the way to do this because it's really simple. The scripture says this in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look continually into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. You want to know if your life is being lived according to the will of God? Then compare your lifestyle to the Word of God. The Word of God is the mirror. The Word of God is what gives us our spiritual reflection. The Word of God is what highlights things in us that need to change. And as we go through the Scripture learning the heart of God, as we look to the Bible to understand His will, we will see things in the Word of God that contradict our nature. We will see truths in the Word of God that contradict our opinions. If you read the Word of God and you're not finding things that contradict your opinions, then you are not looking close enough. Why? Because there are things in all of us that need to change. 
Every single one of us have areas in our lives that can reflect Christ in a better way. And when we read the word, that becomes that spiritual mirror. I don't want you to be ashamed of these truths in the word of God. I want you to make this public declaration by writing three simple words. Write, I choose holiness. Write that in the comment section right now. Make that your commitment. So sign number one, a biblical lifestyle. Sign number two, that you're walking in the will of God is peace of mind. When you're living outside the will of God, nothing brings you peace. Think of Jonah. You've heard of Jonah and the whale. On his way, on his path of disobedience, the Holy Spirit disrupted everything. There is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for those who run from the call of God. Mm. There is no peace for those who live in sin. There yeah. is no peace for those who walk in disobedience, shunning the will of God, shunning the things of God, and doing everything they can to keep God out of their minds. There's no peace in their hearts. The most miserable people you will ever meet are backsliders. Mm. People who've stepped away from the things of God. 2 Peter 2.21 says this, it would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness, then to know it and then reject the command they were given to live a holy life. How scary is that? Truly, the most miserable people I've ever known are backsliders. People who've walked away from the things of God. Don't let that be you. So sign number one, a biblical lifestyle. Sign number two, peace of mind. Now sign number three is going to be a balance to sign number two, a need for faith. Things aren't always going to be peaceful in the will of God. I mean, think about the life of Paul the Apostle. He spent so much time in prison that that's basically his ministry headquarters. Paul's ministry hmm. headquarters was prison. In and out of prison, ridiculed, persecuted, beaten, abandoned, rejected, all of those things. So it's not that when we walk in the will of God, everything is perfectly aligned the way we want it. Sometimes God's will will make you nervous. There are people who plateau in ministry or get stuck in their spiritual walk or get stuck in life or stuck in their business. Why? Because they stop reaching ahead. They settle where they are, not because necessarily they're comfortable, but because they're afraid to take that next step. The Bible says this, in Matthew chapter 26, verses 38 and 39. Then he saith unto them, this is Jesus speaking, just about to be crucified. He knows what's coming. He's going to be crucified. This is what he says. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. Does this look to you like Jesus is comfortable? Does this look to you like there's Nothing in him that wants nothing to do with the cross. No. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. So he's asking, let there be another way. I'm not really comfortable doing this. This is not really the easy thing to do. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That should mm. be the prayer for our lives. Don't mistake a lack of comfort for a lack of peace. Where in the Bible does it say that if you do the will of God, that it will always be comfortable? Don't mistake peace of mind with no discomfort. Don't mistake peace of mind with no hesitation. No, peace of mind is that calm and that trust and that stability despite the doubt, despite the discomfort despite the risk, because sometimes God will ask you to do things that in the natural appear to be risky. Right. Stop spiritualizing your fear. Stop spiritualizing your doubt. Stop hiding behind fear and calling it wisdom. Now, some would say, well, how do I know if it's wise? Well, the only difference between faith and foolishness is whether or not God has spoken. And I've seen people miss opportunities I've seen ministries plateau and stagnate and then shrink because they ceased taking steps of faith. If where you are doesn't require faith, you're not in the will of God. If where you're going doesn't require faith, then you're not going into the will of God. Since when does God put us in a place where we don't need him? You see, if you need God, you need the miraculous. If you need God, it means you're doing things outside of your own ability. But if you're doing things in your own ability, if you're doing things by your own wisdom, if you're doing things on your own timetable, well, it requires no faith at all because everything you do is in your own hands. 
Faith is putting more responsibility in God's hands and stop trying to control everything. Now, good, bad, tragedy, blessings, efficiency, and delay. All of these things happen to everyone all the time. In Matthew 5.45, the Bible says, In that way you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. In other words, good things and bad things happen to the wicked and to the holy, period. The only difference is that those who are filled with the Spirit of God have that internal peace. But sign number three, remember, you will have to exercise faith. It's not always going to be comfortable. Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can't do it because anyone who comes to him must believe two things, must believe that he exists, number one, and number two, that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So there's two things that you have to have faith for. Number one, you have to believe that he exists. Now, as a believer, that's standard. You've got that. That's the first level of faith in God, to even believe that he exists. The second level is to believe that he rewards those who seek him. He rewards those who do his will. He's a man of his word. He is a God who keeps his word. His word does not fail. If you are daring enough, bold enough, faith-filled enough, to believe God at his word, miracles will follow you. Years ago, our ministry had come to this place of comfort. Financially, things were smooth. Our events were doing well. Our media was taking off. We were just kind of coasting on the fruitfulness, I'll say, of the ministry. And, you know, the Holy Spirit asked me, since when does it take no faith to operate a healing ministry? And it shook me. I said, here I am preaching faith and reaching for more. And then we're comfortable. And so then I said, Lord, I don't ever want to get comfortable. I'm going to continually reach for more. We have to continue to step out because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So the three signs, three very clear signs that you're in the will of God. Sign number one, a biblical lifestyle. Measure your lifestyle against the standard of the word. Sign number two, peace of mind. Do you have peace in the midst of the storm? Sign number three, which is a balance to, not a contradiction of, the second point, a need for faith. If where you are doesn't require faith, you're not in the will of God. Simple. Keep moving with the steps of faith. Let's pray now, and let's ask the Holy Spirit to give us the boldness to walk in His will. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us in that good and perfect will of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that one to you now who desires to please you, who desires to be that offering poured out. Lord, spend us for your glory, we pray. And Holy Spirit, I pray even now that every bondage would be broken. Help us to conform to your word and your will. Help us to live lives that please you. We honor you, Lord. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.